tonight on Skillet. This clash of culinary connoisseurs is the ultimate battle to be the best. Our contestants will fight it out to prove they have what it takes to be a cut above the rest. I'm Elon Gold, and this is Skillet. Hey everyone and welcome back to Skillet, the only show that's filmed not in front of a live studio audience, but rather under strict rabbinical supervision. Today we're cooking up even more ways to put our competitors to the test to become Skillet champion. Back today are our triumphant competitors. We have Moshe Block, Kalev Klein, and Moshe Nafisi. So you made it through one challenge, but it's going to take a lot more than that to reach the top. As a reminder, for each challenge, you will have access to our kosher pantry, fridge, and freezer. Once time runs out, you'll be judged by our panel of fabulous judges right here, who will rate your dish on taste, plating, creativity, and how well you met the challenge. You'll also have access to our bonus basket. Utilizing the ingredients from our bonus basket will give you extra points. Just make sure it's showcased in each of your dishes. In today's bonus basket, you will find rice cauliflower, coconut milk, and Wonder Melon, cold pressed watermelon juice. Today is all about seasonality. Your challenge today is to design and execute a composed entree that highlights seasonal produce. In order to help you with that, we have a bounty of incredible, fresh, local produce, courtesy of our very own guest judge, Farmer John. Bring in the produce! When they roll out the produce, the first thing that catches my eye is the candy shred beets. There's an abundance of freshness. You can literally smell the aroma coming off the basket. I figure anything I can grab there, I wouldn't go wrong with. Competitors, today, your dish must feature both cooked and raw applications of our fruits and veggies. The challenge really is to make the vegetables the star. I'm really thinking that, you know, I don't want to make these starchy things. I want to make something that's going to be really vegetable forward with a protein to make it into a balanced meal. As the winner of our previous challenge, Moshe Block has earned an advantage. Moshe, for this round, you get to begin shopping one minute before your two competitors. Let's get fired up. You have 60 minutes to shop, cook, and plate your seasonal entree. Moshe Block, your time starts now. I went to the cart grabbing the produce that called my name. Blood oranges, the carrots, collard greens, some really fresh rosemary. Farmer John, not a chef like these guys, but a farmer, but think about it. If not for you, there is no them. You know, you're like the screenwriter, and they're the director. Without the script, they got nothing to work with. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Oh, Tell us about pleasure. what you brought for us. We've got some excellent kale, collard greens. We've got um, examples of our wonderful citrus this time of year, some great onions, and some fabulous herbs, too. So I see the meal mart rock in the in the fridge. It looks really good. It's calling my name, and I'm thinking the rosemary that I already picked, and I'm like, those two are just going to complement each other. Feels like an eternity, right, fellas? Can't wait for that clock to tick. Right, you're just itching to get over there. You got your baskets? Bring it. Here we go. Three, two, one, go, guys.
my goodness, you could feel the pressure on these guys. Just look at the pressure. Right away, my mind really just goes to, I want to make a veal ragu and really try to showcase the, uh, all the different herbs that we have here today. My plan for the candy striped beets is really to incorporate it into my sauce and also as like a raw garnish onto the dish. They're going. Guys, hurry up. I'd get to that cooking if I were you. A little less shopping, a little more cooking. So I'm thinking about possibly doing a uh, surf and surf dish, but being kosher, can't mix meat and uh, fish. So I saw the hearts of palm, and I was thinking, why not you know, try to incorporate that into the dish, possibly a scallop. All right, let's say hello to our judges again. My buddy, chef and owner of L.A. famed restaurant, La Gondola, and oh, what a restaurant this is. Chef Nir Weinblatt, everybody. Also joining us today, he's the head chef right here at the delicious Tierra Sur restaurant and star of Under the Hood on kosher.com. Please welcome Chef Gabe Garcia, everybody. And also we have a very special guest judge joining us today from Rio Gozo Farm of Ojai, California. Please welcome farmer John Fontaine, everybody. All right, thank you. So tell us a little bit about the difference between the raw and cooked application with these vegetables. It'll really bring out the flavor using more raw. Sometimes it's overcooking or over pureeing or over mixing. Sometimes just let it be, let the vegetable shine on its own. You can see in a dish where people go root from shoot, they'll use the base of the plant all the way to the top. They'll use some portion of it raw and then another portion of it cooked. And to me, that always suggests like a certain finesse and creativity. Let's see how our competitors are doing. So I've never cut through a, a rack of lamb before. It's really tricky just, you know, cutting through, getting some really nice pieces. Wow, that is nice. And you're cutting four. Three for the judges, one for me. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm making a surprise steak. I'm gonna make it with a spicy rub, and then the garnish is gonna be a corn salad and a green salad. I've heard of this surprise steak. This is supposedly the, the top best part cut, of the, rib, the yeah. top part of the rib. We're steak. trying to do a little piece of meat and a lot of vegetable. We'll see if it works. The corn salad is corn on the cob, fresh jalapenos. There's actually these beautiful little spring onions, tomatoes, avocado, chili powder, a little cumin, salt, black pepper, and we're good to go. Forty-five minutes to go. I'm pickling the candy cane beets together with the carrots. The flavors don't affect each other. They just both sit in the pickle and they get that sweet, vinegary flavor. By the way, just for the record, all the greens were checked for kosher root, you know, bugs and stuff ahead of time. The wall slice and the carrots, I nicked my finger and started bleeding. Moshe just a little poked himself right now. So Did he really poke yeah, himself? Yeah, hopefully he's okay. You know, just ripped a piece of a glove and popped it on. With a competition like this, you let something get in your head and you're done. So I keep slicing the carrots, heat up the skillet. I'm gonna start pan roasting the carrots with a little bit of salt, pepper. All right, boys, you got 32 minutes. Don't do that. So I've never worked with collard greens before. I'm gonna chop it up and incorporate it as the base of my salad. Looks like Moshe's using some of that citrus to like kind of cook down the collard greens versus using any kind of heat, almost like a ceviche or something like that. Marinate in it, we can hold it, not like a lettuce where it'll wilt in uh, 10 minutes and forget yeah, and about it. Yeah, break it right down. So I start slicing the beets on the mandolin and I know it's something that you gotta be super careful on just because of how sharp it is and how easy it is to cut yourself. I feel like I've got one more slice left on that beat, but I was wrong. Okay. I'm all right. Just a half a thumb. No, are you serious? No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. Just the cut. Nothing major. 
Two things that I'm worried about is obviously losing some crucial time here and the fact that I totally just lost um, one of my key ingredients, the beets that I was going to incorporate into the sauce and also use it in a raw burger. All right, you're pulling through, Moshe, even with the injury. Good for you. Behind. And sometimes something just don't work out, so you have a backup plan and you go get something else. Competitors, 20 minutes left. Judges, let's talk about the different flavors that go with these veggies. John brought carrots, you know, and carrots are sweet. I think we made a beet cake here one time. Yeah. And beets have to be a little sweet too. Yeah. Some nice ripe avocado, like an avocado mousse. Or custard. Yeah, yeah. For sure. The judges are giving me an idea here. Competitors, in addition to your entree, you'll also need to create a dessert using seasonal produce. Go! When I first threw the curveball that they wanted us to make a dessert, I froze. I didn't know what to do. You know, everything like started ringing in my head. I'm like, dessert right now, really? I would think simple cookie, you know, something that's, you know, easy, tasteful, flavorful. Yeah. I mean, carrots, and you think carrot cake right away. There's no way that with the ingredients that they have here and the time that they have left, and what I still have to do for my dish, yeah, I'll be able to figure out how to make a dessert. So I have an idea to do a cocktail. We've got these beautiful blood oranges. It's the best ingredient to incorporate into a sangria. So I quickly run back out to the pantry, grab the Wonder Melon, and bring it back to my station. Well, is he getting some booze yet? I think he got some whiskey. I thought he was just going to start drinking because he doesn't know what dessert to make. I saw the apples there, and I figured we're going to do something with the apples, and we're going to make it work. So I grabbed the puff pastry. We can make it an apple pie. I'm going to use the whipping cream and cocoa powder to make like a chocolate mousse. I incorporated some of the blood orange in there as well to give some of that tanginess to the sweetness of the chocolate. So I see some Herzog orange muscat. I'm going to use that as well as some brown sugar, some orange juice and blueberries and, and blackberries to make almost like a candy berries to go on top of the chocolate mousse. Oh, that's a great dessert wine. Yeah. The orange muscat, oh, that would be great with the mousse and with the citrus, the blood yeah. orange. Olive, how are we looking? Uh, we're frazzled, but we're gonna get there. Okay. I really gotta focus on coming up with a concept for the dessert, so I quickly grab some of the blackberries, some fresh apples, dice those up, kind of mix them together in some simple syrup, some lime juice to kind of give it a little bit of sweetness, some citrus, throw in a little bit of brown sugar, cinnamon, and all at the same time I'm trying to figure out like, well, what am I gonna do with this fruit mixture? I can't just serve the judge's fruit. I love the deep fryer, let me go back to the wontons and you know make a fried dessert. The one thing that seems to be throwing me off is that when I put things down, I'm not putting them down in the same spot that I found them, so that makes it a little more difficult to find it the next time. I set my wontons out and, uh, you know, learning from mistakes that I made previously, I made sure to wet the edges of the wontons to make sure that they don't open up when they're in the deep fryer. A minute, two minutes go by, I kind of glance back to make sure that they're floating okay, and I realized that two or three of them were just starting to open up, and I was like, oh no, not again. Oh man, stay closed, please, come on. What's the matter? Stay closed, my babies are opening up. And I thought I perfected it, but what do I know? I'm just an amateur. Stay closed, please. Come on. What's the matter? My babies are opening up. And I thought I perfected it, but what do I know? I'm just an amateur. But I also noticed that they weren't really getting a golden brown color. So what I did was I kind of took one of the buckets, put it on top of the other one to kind of cover up the wonton. So hopefully they'll crisp up a little bit faster and also that'll prevent them from opening up as well. Guys, we've got 10 minutes remaining. 10 more minutes. Behind. The time's going so fast, there's so many things happening. If you get distracted, then you cut your finger off. Moshe hasn't played it. He's more concerned with the alcohol. I figured if you guys are boozed up enough, nobody will notice. Judges, with only seven minutes on the clock, what should they be most concerned with? It's nice to see that they all have plates on their tables or plating. He's got a salad going on, but I just don't want him to dress it too soon. I would wait till the last minute 
to dress that salad because you don't want those greens to wilt and fall apart. And especially right. putting hot protein already on it. Exactly. So cook it really fast. One minute. Oh my goodness, it's palpable. You can feel it in the air. These guys are freaking out. Oh my God, 10 seconds. In three, two, time's up. Step away. Congratulations, everybody. So when the time runs out and I look at my dishes, I'm confident in my, my main dish. I'm definitely a little iffy on, on my dessert, but there's not much I can do. I uh, forgot to put the pickled beets and carrots on one of the salad, and that has me a little worried. I realized that I never incorporated some of the fresh ingredients into my plate. So right away I'm like, oh my god, this is a crucial mistake. I cannot believe I let this happen. Let's head over to the Tierra Sur dining room for tasting, shall we? Come on. We're back here at the beautiful Tierra Sur dining room at the fabulous Herzog Winery. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, especially our hungry judges. All right, we'll start with Kalev. Using the seasonal produce, why don't you tell the judges uh, what you prepared for them? A uh, green salad has uh, two types of lettuce. It has the red gem lettuce and it has the frisee lettuce. The dressing is a maple vinaigrette with a little coconut milk in there for a little creaminess and on top you'll find pickled beets and pickled carrots. And then you have a corn salad, there's a little jalapeno in there for a little kick. And for the protein you have a market steak with a spicy rub. You have a simple composed dish, you know, you got your greens, you got a relish, and you got a steak, a protein. And then the steak, man, just on point. The corn is actually cooked perfect, it's still a little al dente, can taste the corn. The other judges had a little bit of the uh, candy stripe beets on it, in which I love, and I didn't have any, so I'm a little upset about that, but otherwise it was great. The way that you set the salad out was nice too, a lot like they would be if you had cut the head of lettuce open. Nicely done. So for dessert, I prepared for you a deconstructed apple pie. The puff pastry is a little sugar to give it a little flavor, and then on top of that, we have some roasted apples. And the roasted apples, we have a little bourbon, a little cinnamon, and a little honey to, to balance it out. And I finished it off with a simple syrup flavored by the beautiful citrus brought by our farmer. And I put a few pieces on top for garnish. I don't think this was a curveball for you. <laughs> I mean, your flavors of the apple, the oranges, it just goes together. What I love about dessert, it's simple. Apples are cooked perfect, they're still al dente, which really adds a little crunch and texture. I have to be honest, when I say cook the puffs pastry, I was a little nervous because it was very pale and it was actually cooked pretty much all the way. I think that the citrus does balance very well um, with the apples. If I had one critique, I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit of the zest or something like that show up in the dish to be a little bright on it, tie everything together, but otherwise I thought it was a great dessert. Thank you very much. Great job. Next up, Moshe Block. What do you have for our chefs? So honing in on the whole theme of the fresh produce and the seasonal produce and where it's grown in Ojai, right off the coast, I was going with a mock surf and turf. So we've got the lamb and I'm serving it with a fresh collard green salad. I made a dressing with the watermelon and coconut milk with added acidity from the blood orange. Pan roasted some mock scallops. I used hearts of palm and pan roasted uh, carrots. Your surf and turf, what a brilliant idea. You truly uh, embraced using the produce. Collard greens can be tricky. They were just a little too teethy and too green. I was a little nervous that this was burnt. It's actually the glaze. And you used from cooked to raw. You really nailed that part also. I thought the lamb was very good. I like the way that the rosemary comes through, the way that the heart of palm mimics scallop and then sits on top of the Kyoja beet, which uh, kind of ties in all the color. It's really engaging. I think either the collards needed to be cut a bit thinner or maybe even pan fried just for a second or two. I like the way that you were using the citrus with them and I've certainly had them where they've been marinated in citrus and it'll actually break them down a bit. Tell us about your dessert. So I did a uh, blood orange chocolate mousse topped with some candy berries. 
Just a nice, easy, good, simple dessert and enjoyable. And the flavors are really strong, so the taste of it is very good. If I had one critique, I would have uh, roasted the walnuts or something like that. All right, next up, Moshe Nafisi. By the way, Nafisi is uh, Farsi for I know my way around a kitchen, okay? Thank you, Elon. Chefs, today I prepared for you a uh, veal bolognese. I started the sauce from scratch, diced up some tomatoes, incorporated some of the Herzog Cabernet, and I also really just wanted to showcase the herbs uh, that we had from Farmer John. I used the marjoban, the sage, some of the thyme in there, a little bit of the basil. Overall, man, great dish. I got the herbs of Provence. I just wish you would have used some kale, you know, maybe a little fried sage or something. Probably the best dish for the main courses all together. The only negative is you didn't use any of the fresh, any of the sweet ingredients, but this is what you call feel-good food. It's really, really delicious. Pasta, you know, can either be underdone or overdone, and I think you nailed that perfectly. Let's have these chefs enjoy your dessert. What did you make for them? We've got a blood orange, apple, blackberry stuffed dessert, a coconut cream dripping sauce, in the sauce, I incorporated a little bit of the orange muscat, but it's really also being showcased in the blood orange sangria. And uh, there's a kiss of the lemon cayenne wonder melon in the sangria as well. You really knocked this out of the park. Whoa. Honestly, this was phenomenal. Sweetness on top. It's not saturated, so it stays crunchy. You're eating it, and it's a nice way to finish it off. So we're going to steal this cocktail. The integration of the melon juice was insane. The sauce was great, little overdone in the fryer. So it kind of overpowered everything. You get that little burnt flavor. I kind of liked mine a little crispy and, and perhaps even overdone, and I, I really liked the filling on the inside, so. Thank you, Chef. So we'll take a little break. Our judges will deliberate and figure out which one of you didn't skill it. Gentlemen, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Three talented young men, some incredible dishes, great desserts. What are your thoughts? Moisha Nafisi, he really brought it, man. The cocktail I could drink all day long. The pasta, wow. I mean, this is probably one of my hardest judging decisions, because here you have a guy who hit a home run, but in the wrong game. If we just integrated a couple more vegetables, maybe the little greens or something into that pasta, so how do you compare something like what Moshe Nafisi did with someone like Moshe Block, who really showcased the challenge and used everything? Frustrated, because Moshe Block used lamb, which is a most amazing piece of meat, but it's a simple meat, where Moshe Nafisi actually went and made a ragu. The, the lamb wasn't the star of Moshe's dish. His scallops and his carrots were the stars, actually. He painted a, a picture on that board. Yeah, it was gorgeous. But again, his dish was not the best dish out there. And let's talk about Kali for a second. I think he nailed the taste. Both dishes, his apples were perfectly cooked. The acid with the oranges went well, so perfect. His dressing in the salad, the corn. He met a lot of the challenges. He used some of the bonus ingredients. He plated really well. What made the scoring a challenge is that um, it wasn't simply based on the taste of the dish. Would you say there's a consensus here? I, I think so. I think so too. All right then, let's uh, bring the fellas back in, shall we? Well, gentlemen, it's that time. This is my least favorite part of the show. It's not easy because the truth is you all certainly impressed with your seasonal dishes. Only one of you can take home our prize, which is a barrel of the finest exclusive Herzog wine that they're gonna bottle for you here at the winery, worth over $20,000. Here's the good news. There were no winners today. Since two of you tied, that means no one will be going on to the next round with an advantage. Unfortunately, though, there is only room for two in the next challenge. The competitor who didn't skill it today and will be going home is... I hate to do this. 
Moshe Nafisi. I'm a pretty competitive person. I don't like to lose. So as soon as I heard the judge's decision, it was a shock. I would have loved to come back and really compete for that grand prize. But it's really like a cool experience, once in a lifetime, I would say. Really nothing like I imagined it. And it was just a blast, a lot of fun. So that means Moshe Block and Kalev Klein, you are our finalists. Fellas, make sure you are ready to turn up the heat and battle it out to become Skillet Champion. On the next Skillet, it all comes down to our final two competitors. No matter how good you think you are, you still have to impress the judges. If you're gonna go traditional, you better execute it perfect. Coming into a competition like this, you, you wanna win it. The nerves are hitting me regardless. You really can't be prepared because you have no idea what they're throwing at you. Oh my God, I'm freaking out.